If you focus on everything about your English communication skills, you focus on nothing. And I'm not talking about the focus we need to remember more vocabulary when we carefully watch a movie or a video or the focus we need to pay close attention to what the other person is saying in a conversation. I'm talking about what you focus on spending your time with in your English learning journey. And unfortunately, a lot of struggling English students who don't have a clear goal with a clear focus on what communication skills they're improving every week or every month, will risk wasting months, if not years, not seeing substantial progress with their fluency or their confidence. Here's the biggest problem with how struggling English students, professionals, business owners, academics, or even students who know how incredibly important it is for their career, for their life, for their opportunities to speak English more fluently, approach practicing their speaking skill. They expect to improvise, which is something I wasn't comfortable with for a very long time on my English learning journey. And I perfectly understand it's frustrating not to be able to articulate yourself, your thoughts, as well as you can in your native language. And I know what it feels like to avoid using certain vocabulary or grammar structure when you're not 100% sure if the correct preposition is gonna be on, in, at, if the correct verb to use that expression with is gonna be do, make, take, put. It was frustrating for me. Frustrating is an understatement when I'm describing my experience with learning English back in the days. And I'm always going to talk about the fact that I gained confidence in speaking English naturally despite speaking Hungarian as my native language, a completely different language from English, we have words that have got nothing to do with the words in English. Our grammar is different. I was still able to build confidence in speaking English fluently and naturally, partly because I learned to be okay with that frustration. If you're looking for ways to boost your English communication skills, you wanna look for ways to express yourself better, articulate your thoughts, better and speak English more naturally so you don't end up repeating what you've been doing in the last few years, using the same basic expressions, not using more complex grammar structures to express yourself, keeping on making the same mistakes even if you know theoretically what the correct way to say those things is. You most probably experience this because you focus on everything all the time, all at once when you're trying to improve your fluency in English. And the thing with practicing your fluency without a clear focus on what aspect of my fluency, whether it's my vocabulary, the complexity of my grammar, my pronunciation, my intonation, my effective communication skills is that it creates a lot of anxiety, frustration and stress. And my mission online and in my business is to show you a way to learn English the way I was learning English without all that extra unnecessary stress, worrying and frustration that surrounds so many struggling English students' way of improving their fluency. And the ultimate key to learning to speak English in a stress-free way is, first of all, being okay with not being good at improvising yet, because we are learning a second language. It's okay for us to make mistakes and end up looking for words that we still haven't master and to boost your English communication skills by focusing more on speaking training, getting better and better at articulating yourself better, using more complex grammar and vocabulary instead of fluency practice, which is something you're going to hear a lot more about in the second part of this video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chubby. I'm an English fluency learning and language anxiety coach and this is my channel for serious English learners, ambitious professionals, business owners, academics who want to learn how to remember vocabulary more effectively and how to speak English more fluently, freely, comfortably and confidently with the help of improving their listening skills and their spoken interaction skills. So these are topics that you're into and you'd like to find out more about. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you can get access to everything I share on my YouTube channel so you can start building your fluency and confidence without all that stress. Rule number two after rule number one, which is don't worry about making mistakes, it seems like an obvious piece of advice, but never assume that things are said and expressed in English in the same way as they are expressed in your native language. And all I can think of off the top of my head are the typical mistakes my Spanish speaking students, for example, make when they translate word by word the expression por esa razón as for this reason, when that's why is a more natural way to say that thing. Or when my Japanese speaking students say, si fudoraiba, 
translating again word by word from the Waste EU expression when what they actually mean is a careful driver. If you look at the biggest reasons most struggling English students fail to boost their communication skills, it's either because they repeat the same expressions every single time they have a chat have a conversation whether it's at work in their real life in class or on an online platform they end up repeating the same mistakes over and over again not understanding that the reason they make mistakes is simply because they established and maintain the same habit of saying things the same way instead of focusing on what actually helps them speak English more correctly or they just expect to practice 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 speak 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 without any clear focus on what they want to improve about their communication skills and magically improve their fluency which is something I dive much deeper into in another video you can check out. If you can identify with at least two of these that probably means you're still deep down are afraid of making mistakes. Because when effective English communicators in our community or in my private language coaching program request feedback on those mistakes, they start paying more attention to the times they are about to make those mistakes so they can finally correct them and then start automatizing the correct way of saying things. When they understand this really powerful way to boost your English communication skills, which I'm about to tell you in the next couple of minutes, they know how they cannot just expect to improvise all the time and that words aren't just gonna come automatically all the time because we actually need to focus on training our brain, our speech organs, to express ourselves better and better and better. Because imagine you're preparing for a presentation in front of your colleagues or in front of like, what, 50, 100 people, even more. Wouldn't you start planning what you see? What expressions to use to link those slides and to make that presentation more engaging and then rehearse the presentation over and over again so that by the time you actually give that presentation, you have more confidence. What if all you need to do is to do the same when it comes to telling better stories, preparing for managing a meeting, suggesting ideas at a meeting, or when you negotiate with your clients. Ever since I got to a proficient C2 level of English by the age of 24, I always looked at learning English as a Hungarian native speaker as more of a blessing because I didn't have a chance of just saying things just because we say it in a certain way in Hungarian. I couldn't just translate word by word. Our grammar is completely different from English. We don't have prepositions because of a hundred other things. And this active listening is still something very few people focus on and are watching a lot of series, movies, but then don't remember a lot of the vocabulary that they would be learning from them if they had paid more attention. I always made sure, and partly because I was so afraid of making mistakes, terrified of messing up, embarrassing myself because I used the wrong collocations. I always made sure I learned those collocations, like do sports or make a decision or take medicine correctly in the first place, which a lot of struggling English students, even people who've been learning English for years, still make mistakes with because of, again, lack of requesting feedback and the danger of just assuming that things work the same way in English as they work in your native language is that because the way we speak is kind of a habit, sometimes without knowing that we are making mistakes, and again, I'm not against making mistakes, but we make mistakes so we could learn how to see things better, struggling English students risk automatizing those mistakes to a level where we, we call this fossilization, when it becomes really hard, if not impossible, to correct those mistakes. If you wanna speak not just more fluently, but also more correctly, more naturally, more confidently, and you don't wanna keep your mistakes for the rest of your life, make sure you check out and download my free ebook in which I lay down the step-by-step -step method how I built confidence in speaking English, how I've helped hundreds of professionals professionals over the last 17 years build confidence in speaking English, articulating their thoughts so they can express themselves more effectively that you can find in the first link in the description below. Now this brings me to talking about the most important type of practice, most important activity that helped all my students articulate their thoughts better in a conversation, no matter their level, use a wider range of vocabulary when they express themselves and speak English more confidently in front of other people. And if you start shifting towards this kind of practice, you will be able to boost your English communication skills in no time. In our program, we always have two different ways my students improve their speaking skills. We have these traditional conversation circles where my students come together from all kinds of different countries 
and talked about a specific topic or they have a project or a task to work on like they need to come up with a marketing plan to promote their business practice their negotiation skills how to give a persuasive presentation or even how to apologize politely or how to invite other people into a conversation something that they will eventually need real experience with for their real life situation. In these conversation circles, their focus is on speaking fluently, expressing themselves, remembering words, noticing what gaps they have, like what words they don't remember that they've learned before, and just casually having a conversation using the grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation they already know and get loads and loads of constructive feedback. But what actually helps them boost their English communication skills is the type of class we call speaking boosters. These are the type of classes specifically designed to help a small number of people in our classes where we focus not on practicing speaking but more on improving their fluency, their speaking skills or their communication skills. And if you don't know the difference between what practicing your English speaking skills and improving your English speaking skills is, you can check out the video where I talk about this in much more detail. Because what you say and how you say something in English are two different things. And the human brain cannot focus both on what you say and how you say it, even in your native language. When you constantly look at what somebody else is doing uh, while you're having a phone call, you're not gonna be able to control the type of grammar you use or the choice of words that you use as you have a conversation with someone because your attention is not on expressing yourself the best way. You just use what you can already say automatically. The most important step and something I spend a lot of my time with is to design activities that are targeted at a bit above my students level. A lot of struggling English students either have really unrealistic expectations, like they want to speak English perfectly all the time, use three idioms in every sentence and have a native accent without putting in the consistent practice, or because they understand a lot of English that they cannot use in their conversations, they overestimate their level of fluency. But the only way for us to stay motivated, because motivation comes after having a conversation, after taking courageous action, we need to be able to set the difficulty of any activity, whether it's the videos, the series you watch, the podcast you listen to, the books you read, the writing activities you use to improve your writing skills, or the conversation topics, the type of conversations, the communication skills that you want to get better at, to just a bit above our current level of English, so we can focus on that 1-5% to improvement every time we try, instead of expecting perfection that doesn't exist. So if you're struggling with making progress with your fluency or your communication skills, it's most probably because you're not optimizing the activities you do to your focus, your goals, or your level. An example of speaking training as opposed to fluency practice would be like specifically practicing how to tell engaging stories in a conversation, which is a common situation a lot of my students find themselves in, whether it's in a more professional or in a more real life situation in their everyday life. First, we always look at loads and loads of conversation examples where we see those typical expressions people use to tell engaging stories to each other. So I spend quite a lot of time researching, looking for materials, videos, podcasts, interviews that contain that typical language people use to tell engaging stories. So my students can extract useful phrases like, you'll never guess what I did last week. Have I ever told you about the time I visited Sri Lanka? Or expressions to create suspense so your audience keeps listening. But that's not the end of the story. And then to make matters worse, strategically learning, what I always mention, learning the smart way to boost your English communication skills is all about what effective English communicators focus on, building their communication skills as they were constructing a building in the traditional way. First, we need some sort of scaffolding around the building that helps us stay safe and then keep constructing that building. The whole point of speaking training is to help my students move away from just 
understanding those expressions that they would recognize in movies and all kinds of conversations on podcasts or in interviews to get them into their long-term memory so they can easily use them in a conversation after consistent practice. Now, this isn't gonna happen in one class. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to expect that by the end of a class you take, you're going to remember and use confidently all the vocabulary that you learned because long-term memory requires consistency, focus, and repetition. So instead of practicing the same communication skill in like a one 60-minute class, I always design my classes in a way that my students get practice with the same conversation skill and it's something I recommend you do in 20 minutes over a longer period of time. Focusing on how your brain naturally learns and helps you learn faster, spacing out your practice. The first few of these 20 minute blocks, my students intentionally use those expressions in specific conversation practice activities so they get better at the typical situations they need to use those expressions in. After listening to a few examples, the next few 15-20 minute blocks, my students get to practice with specifically designed activities that help them, for example, fill in the gaps in a situation, put the words of the key expressions in the right order, or other activities that I design that build their long-term memory so in a future conversation it all comes naturally. And in the last few of those blocks, my students get real-time practice where they can start intentionally using those expressions so they get better at telling stories in a more engaging way. The key is to plan in advance what you're practicing with focus. And it doesn't need to be telling stories. It could be, you know, recently we practiced how to suggest ideas, how to respond to ideas, which is something my students, most of them are professionals, they have meetings, they come up with ideas, brainstorm all the time, need to be good at on a regular basis. And you can practice any of these communication micro skills that you need in your real life, whether it's learning to apologize politely or ask polite questions or how to explain a process to someone else. As long as you stay focused on one at a time, you stay consistent with that practice, you practice skills that are targeted at your level, optimized at your level, you're always going to be able to boost your communication skills. Now, a lot of struggling English students might not practice in this last stage where we have to think and intentionally use new expressions in our conversation practices because it's kind of uncomfortable. It's so much easier to just say whatever is on your mind. The reason speaking training is so helpful for all my students, whether it's advanced level students or intermediate, upper intermediate level students, is because if we keep focusing on just randomly speaking and improving our fluency, how do we expect to get better at and build confidence around using new expressions and phrases? Get really comfortable with, you know, taking time to think about how could I say this in a better way? Or giving yourself time before the conversation. You can collect a few of your ideas or come up with a few typical phrases that you can start using in that conversation with more confidence instead of just repeating what you already know, which I don't think is going to help you improve. It's going to help you practice, which I don't think helps us improve our communication skills. It might help us practice our speaking skills. They are not the same. Speaking English is a habit. And this is especially going to be important if you want to jump from the intermediate to the advanced level. Because one of the reasons a lot of struggling English students stay in that intermediate plateau without seeing any progress for years and years of practicing is because they keep on just improving, practicing their fluency instead of getting new vocabulary, taking all those risks they need to take, no matter whether they make mistakes or not, so they can also improve and boost their communication skills. So if you find yourself keeping on repeating yourself, maybe making the same mistakes that you conceptually know that are mistakes you just somehow can't for the life of you get rid of those mistakes and you want to be able to articulate your thoughts way better to break through this intermediate plateau, spending more time with speaking practice instead of constantly randomly speaking and only practicing your fluency is definitely going to help you boost your English communication skills. Tell me in the comments, how often do you focus on improving specific communicative skills that we've talked about in this video that you need to be or want to be better at 
in your professional or in your everyday life. Let me know your thoughts about this video and if you have any questions around how to improve your communication skills, your speaking or your fluency, also pop them in the comments below and I'll make sure I create a video about this in the future. Thank you so much again for watching and hope to see you soon. In the first few of those 15-20 minute section, concessions, uh, blocks. In the first few of those 15-20 minute block. Ah. So in the first, now tell me in the comments, how often do you practice, come on, how often? Uh, now tell me in the comments, how often do you focus on training your, come on, now tell me in the comment. Now tell me in the comments. How often do you focus on it? In command. Now tell me in the comments. How often do you focus on improving a specific communicative skill that you need to be get, get command? Tell me in the comments. How often do you focus on improving specific communication skills that you need to get better at in your real life or in your? Tell me in the now tell me in the comments. How often do you how often?